If you live in New York City, carjackings like this are quite literally a daily occurrence. It's been six months, and of the people attacked and a driver who took off with a person's car, as of tonight, only one suspect in this carjacking is behind bars. New York City Mayor Eric Adams ran on a platform to combat crime. He served 20 years in an NYPD uniform, but cops do not exactly like his latest plan to fix the crime problem. He's asking New Yorkers to send in pictures of police on patrol. If they're using their phones in a subway station, the mayor wants you to send him a picture. This adds to officer frustration with a mayor who fired police officers for refusing the vaccine at a time when clearly New York needs every cop they can keep. Overall, crime in the Big Apple is up 30% since 2017. That's according to the NYPD. When you look at violent crime, it's more concerning over the same period. Murders up 67%, rape 2%, carjackings up 83%. Joe Gamaldi, former New York City police officer, current national vice president of the Fraternal Order of Police, uh, with us now. I'm trying to figure out, Joe, how, how would Eric Adams, forget whether this is a good idea or not, just not realize it would just monumentally really upset and insult the very people who he needs right now? Well, I mean, it's a horrible decision, Leland. First of all, officer morale is in the tank. It's the worst I've ever seen it for 17 years. And now you go out and tell the public, hey, make sure you're taking pictures of police officers if they happen to look at their phone for any period of time, which, by the way, the department issues them phones to look at while they're out on patrol, I will remind you. And all that does is exacerbate the trust or the problems with trust in our community when you have a confrontational situation where you have citizens going up to officers taking pictures while they just happen to be their phone. It's a stupid idea, and I don't know why he decided to bring this forward, because there are real problems in New York right now. Murders are up 54% from two years ago. Ro uh, robberies are up 20% from last year. Shootings are up 85%. And as you just commented, there's crime and disorder everywhere. And don't get me wrong, the mayor has done some very good things. He's brought back broken windows theory. He's attempting to restore the rule of law. I tell you, if he can't get the other politicians on board in New York, including the governor, the DA, and the judges, it's not going to make a whole hell of a lot of difference. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm still confounded by why someone would say that and, and do all the things that you did and set this up. I mean, it's, it's almost like something you would hear from de Blasio or Lori Lightfoot or somebody who wanted to be antagonistic uh, or, you know, I'm thinking of, you know, Kim Fox in, in Chicago. Um, Eric Adams has now asked NYPD commanders to brainstorm plans to combat crime. New York Post, the mayor is turning to the commanders to see if they can brainstorm ideas. He's planning to meet with them uh, this weekend. What happened? There were so many police officers that we talked to when Eric Adams was both nominated as a Democrat and then won that really thought this was a turning point for them. Has he betrayed you guys? Well, I don't know that he's betrayed officers. He's attempted to do some good things, like I talked about, with bringing back broken windows theory, restoring the rule of law. But where I think Mayor Adams falls short is not holding the rest of the criminal justice system accountable for what they're doing. Police officers are just one component. We have bail reform, which has been an unmitigated disaster in New York. We have the continued sweetheart deals to violent repeat felons. And the mayor has not provided leadership to put pressure on other people people within his party to make sure they're enforcing the laws. Because listen, police officers are going to go out there. We're going to catch these suspects. We're going to put them in jail. But if you let them right out the back door before the paperwork's done, mm. we're not going to be able to get this violent crime under control. So his focus should not be on telling citizens, hey, why don't you take pictures yeah, I, of police officers? Instead, his focus should be on making sure the rest of his party does their job. Yeah, and you think about it in terms of letting people out on, on bail or with no bail. Um, it's not a problem just in, in New York or Chicago or St. Louis, big cities. It's a problem in small cities. I'm thinking about Albuquerque, New Mexico, that we've done a lot of reporting on. Uh, there is conceivably a role for the federal government. Merrick Garland, the uh, attorney general on Capitol Hill today, take a listen. Because there is no one solution fits all that the federal government can suggest to state and local law enforcement. We believe state and local law enforcement knows best as to what to do there. We provide, well, it's not working. We provide our technical expertise. That was Tuesday. I believe that was Senator Kennedy chiming in. It's not working. Uh, is this a national problem with a federal solution, or does it have to come bottom up uh, with police and prosecutors? 
Well, I think there's a number of different things we need to consider. Of course, it's a local and a state problem on a certain level. When we talk about district attorneys cutting sweetheart deals from violent repeat felons, that's a local problem. When we talk about bail reform, which, by the way, there is no proof that bail reform is going to work or make our community safer, but yet you had politicians and academic hacks convincing the public that this was going to be good, when yet every study on the back end, including a University of Utah study for Cook County, said that bail reform has been a disaster and that people are reoffending while they're out on their pinky promise PR bonds, and it continues to drive our violent crime rate. But when you ask what the federal government can do, of course, they can provide additional resources mm -hmm. to local law enforcement. But in addition to that, the Department of Justice can take cases and in the feds can take cases that the DAs refuse to because we literally have district attorneys yeah. Larry Krasner in Philly Kim Fox uh, we have Marilyn Mosby who are not throwing the book at violent felons who use guns and Leland we have a national conversation no, I, 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 about I, look, I, I know right my, my hometown is Saint, seeking the maximum I know my hometown of St. Louis is having the very the very same problems with the federal the feds are literally overwhelmed uh, Joe even you are going to stick around for the next story through the T's. We are going to tell you in just a minute why there is an entire state legislature that thinks the word marijuana is racist. We'll be right back. Thanks for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.